Humans, cyborgs, welcome. Kevin of Nine here. At the age of 36, I was told I needed to get a pacemaker. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences and hopefully it helps some of you out too. When I first found out I needed a pacemaker, I went through a wide range of emotions, which is normal. Uh, at first, you know, I was scared and angry. Um, I was trying to figure out why this was happening to me. I didn't think I was old enough to, to need a pacemaker. You know, of course you're scared. The Something's going on with your heart. You know, you need that. <laughs> if uh, something goes, stops with the heart, you're, you're dead. Death is irrelevant. And that was really scary to me. Um, I went through all the ranges of emotion, kind of the same as grieving a loss. Um, after um, the anger and um, being scared came, um, bargaining you know I really was bargaining I was saying you know I lived with this my whole life so far I haven't died everything is gonna be okay I don't really need this to um, you know maybe it's a different medical problem maybe if I lost some weight maybe if I exercised more um, you know maybe that would help maybe if I have sleep apnea it could be associated to um, your heart stopping in the middle of the night for a little while you know maybe I can um, take care of some other things and not have to go to the drastic step of getting a pacemaker. I was very concerned after the first um, meeting with the cardiologist so I decided to have a second opinion um, because I you know was in denial for a while you know I really don't need this and um, after going to the second cardiologist he helped um, alleviate some of my fears he told me you do need to get a pacemaker um, the evidence from the heart monitor is conclusive. There's no other test. Um, there's no other thing to do to um, try to diagnose this. You need to have a pacemaker. And he said, if you get this pacemaker, you're going to live a long, happy life. And that helped a lot. Um, but the biggest thing that helped convince me was I was thinking about my family. I was thinking about my young daughter and wife and what would happen if I was gone. You know, what if I didn't get the surgery and something happened to me and they'd be on their own? And that really made me sad and upset that I wouldn't be around for important family or lifetime events. You know, I wouldn't be around for my daughter as she grew up because um, I had so many plans, uh, things that I wanted to do and share with her, go on adventures, go on trips. Um, one of the, our favorite things to do is go to Disneyland and just the thought of not being able to be there and experience that with her um, made me incredibly upset. So th those were some of the determining factors where you know, I helped go through my process to say, yes, I do need to get this pacemaker. And um, the second cardiologist telling me that you know, what, once you're done with, um, once you've had the surgery and you're through your recovery period, there are going to be very few restrictions on your activity. You know, I was concerned about Disneyland. I said roller coasters, any kind of restrictions on that, and he said uh, no restrictions. So I was happy to hear that. That kind of alleviated some of my fears. Um, the procedure, you know, I was worried about complications, and he said, you know, usually complications come when um, people have other health problems also, and they're getting this surgery. So I was relatively healthy otherwise. Um, so he said there's the, the biggest risk I had from my surgery was going to be um, risk of infection. Now I'm happy to report I did not have any complications like that, but I'll talk uh, more about that in a different video. One of the other interesting things that I was going through um, in the days after finding out I needed to get the pacemaker was talking to my family about it, my extended family, my parents, uh, my in-laws. I had to, I felt like I was justifying to them why I needed it. It sounded crazy to them that I actually needed to get this pacemaker. So these, you know, they're thinking the same thing I am. Well, you're relatively young. You haven't had any other health problems. So why, why did this come up all of a sudden? There's no family history, no one else in my family that I know of has had a pacemaker before or an electrical problem with the heart. So it was a surprise to them. And 
I did find myself like almost selling it. I had to to justify, you know, this is here's the evidence. You know, it, it kind of helped me in a way. I wish I didn't have to, you know, if they were just come out and been supportive, but you know, hey, I was skeptical too. You know, it's natural for them to be skeptical. And I laid out the evidence and showed them and had to explain it. And going through it with them, it was kind of a transition process to to get them to turn around to realize that I needed this. And that almost um, reflected it was a, what I was going through myself. And it actually helped me work through it. Every time I'd explain the situation, it helped me work through it a little bit more myself. So if you're about to get a pacemaker implanted, or you know somebody that is and you have concerns, um, please like and subscribe because I will be um, uploading other videos about topics such as what to expect before surgery, um, what to expect after, and restrictions, and how I've been doing since I've had my pacemaker surgery. Subscribe now. Resistance is futile.